Now, let me welcome Stephen McPartland, the Conservative MP Tom was talking about, MP for, for Stevenage. Stephen, hi. Hi, John. How are you? I'm well. So from what Tom was saying, you are very far from being impressed by the proposals of the Housing Secretary. Oh, yeah, very much so. I mean, um, just to pick up on one of Tom's points, um, I do have an amendment down to the Fire Safety Bill, which has 39 Conservative signatures on it. So um, we're not that far away from being able to put pressure on the government. And the announcement today is um, the reason, you know, effectively why, because within the parliamentary party, um, mm. there's huge concern over this. So we are very, very close. And, and when you say you've got 39, you're very close to the numbers you say that with all the opposition MPs combined, and maybe that number would grow, you could defeat the government. But are all of those 39 Conservative MPs prepared to vote with you to throw out Robert Jenrick's proposals and add maybe another £15 billion? Pounds? Um, so, no, um, the amendment, all the amendment does is basically makes it clear that leaseholders shouldn't pay, and right. that's an amendment to the fire safety bill. So um, a lot of the um, cost that leaseholders are going to incur, they don't actually legally um, happen until the fire safety bill goes through Parliament. Right, OK. And so, that's going to happen in the next um, couple of months. OK, so what is it you want from the government, and have you the, the numbers? Have you got the muscle in the House of Commons to force them to deliver it? Yeah, well, I mean, I think um, we've got the we've got the numbers because we've already demonstrated that we've got three and three and a half billion pound out of them today. Um, the reason I had my head in my hands when I was listening to the statement was because I just couldn't believe he he got it so wrong. I mean, it just it is incompetence. There's a lot of smoke and mirrors. He very he, he succinctly stuck constantly to the phrase cladding. He mm. ignored fire safety defects. Now, cladding is only one part of fire safety defects. So waking watchers, massive insurance premiums, um, compartmentalisation, huge issues. And to give you an example, um, a waking watch in my constituency is currently costing leaseholders in one block £15,000 a week. Yeah. Um, so they're basically paying as much in one month on their waking watch alone as they are on their mortgages. And then there's the insurance the insurance premiums on top and a whole host of other issues yeah. and if we look at um, what we announced, you know, the support for buildings over 18 metres, it was only for cladding, it wasn't for fire safety defects. So people, we've already had leaseholders contacting us and then they would be on your show um, talking about the fact that it actually only helps them a little bit, it doesn't help them resolve the wider issues. Mm. And that's a huge problem for us. Leaseholders in buildings 11 to 18 metres, they're talking about loans and, um, you know, it may be no more than £50 a month, uh, but the loan would be attached to the property. So it was a Fifty thousand pound loan. It either takes eighty three years to pay the loan off at fifty pound a month and no interest, roughly, or you've just wiped fifty thousand pound off the price of the property and put that leaseholder into negative equity. Okay, so you want all of this this cladding stripped away. You want it replaced. You want the extra safety precautions put into buildings too, whether <coughs> it's fire, fire alarms, just <coughs> just necessary improvements. What would it cost to do that for everyone who needs it, Stephen? So they they wouldn't be out of pocket. Have you got a, a figure? Um, nobody has the actual figures. The estimates are actually closer to 30 billion upwards, not 15 billion. 30 so billion? Are, okay, that's yeah. a lot of money, isn't it? Yeah, it's affecting pushing 11 million people in this country. So you are talking about hundreds of thousands of blocks of flats and then all those flats within it. I mean, we're talking, you know, it's a huge part of the um, housing estate in this country that's yeah. affected. And a lot of this goes back to incompetence within the department and the Secretary of State and Housing Minister. In January 2020, they changed the guidance and they issued a consolidated advice note. And that guidance meant the buildings, which were over 18 metres, which it used to apply to, and there's about 12,000 of them, we believe, um, they said it applied to every building of every height, every property. So that then took it from around 12,500 properties to literally hundreds of thousands of properties. Yes. So if you're, if you're in a second story flat with a wooden balcony, you're being treated in exactly the same way as being on the top of a 30 metre tower wrapped in cladding. Okay, just really briefly, uh, uh, Stephen, how do you rate the chances of you making the government cough up up to £30 billion to help up to 11 million people without being out of pocket? What are the chances well, of you doing that? Well, I, I think we'll have to get them to change some of the guidance and deal with the RICS and some of the areas. I'm sure we can get the government to actually stand behind leaseholders and then recoup a lot of the money from developers, um, insurance companies, building owners and a plethora of professional organisations right. who've all said these buildings were safe over the last 30 years. Okay, we're watching that. I guess we can call it a campaign now. Thanks for joining <laughs> us. Stephen McPartland. Now, Zoe Bartley joins us now from Essex. Hi, Zoe. 
Hello. Hi. So, look, you know a lot about this because you're caught right in the middle, aren't you? Yes, I am, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, tell us your, your story. You've got a, you share a lease um, and, and, you, and you've got a flat. Tell us a bit about your flat and the state of things. Yes, so I have a 30% shared ownership flat. It's a one-bedroom property on the first floor um, in Chelmsford in Essex. Um, about, I bought it about four years ago. Um, roughly, uh, when I was single, I now have a family um, and we're looking to move. Uh, we looked to move last year, in January of last year, mm-hmm. um, and it was only after uh, we put the flat on the market um, that we found out that there were a number of fire safety issues in our building. Yeah, so you so you, you, you got this flat, you've now got uh, a partner, you've got a couple of kids, eight and nine year old, that's right, isn't it? So that's, yeah, that's, a, that's a lot to, to think about. And you got the place before the Grenfell disaster. Then suddenly, as, as with a lot of people, you know, maybe millions of people, it all went wrong. And you found out that your flat needs an awful lot done to it. Tell me what sort of work needs to be done on your flat? So we recently found out that we have uh, HPL cladding, which is a type of highly flammable cladding. Um, We've also got insulation that we've been told hasn't been correctly installed. Um, In their report or in the letter they sent to us, they noted that he had been taped into place um, and therefore not safe. Um, We've also got missing fire breaks in the external walls and we've had issues with internal internal compartmentation inside the building. Yeah, that's, that, you know, well, that's a lot. That's a long list. And I, look, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? It sounds pretty scary when you look at what happened at Grenfell Tower. You got your place just before that, that happened. And now you're sitting in a, in a place with, with, with cladding, which is in the category described as flammable, potentially dangerous. You're sitting there with two young kids. That's, that's scary, isn't it? Yes, it's terrifying. Um, I mean, we've not only got the, the safety issue, we've got the financial burden of blank check basically sitting above our head and it's it's a lot to to put on them we do you know how much money do you know how much money though you you, you, you'd have to find no not at the moment um we've been going through the investigation process for the past year um and we've only just been told an overview of the issues um they've told us that the report um and a remediation plan is still underway um and that they'll share that along with the cost uh, in due course but at the moment um they've basically said that they won't the the building owners won't pay for it um and under the terms of our lease we will have to pay for it yeah and you built and you're in a place just under 18 meters so you're talking about loans not grants you, you'd have to find a way to to meet that unless this campaign uh, on this against the government finds a way of changing the the promise than the offer from the government so we're going to be watching that so look thank you for joining us 